Amanda, have you seen my corduroy jacket? Everyone's favorite. Well, their on again, off again romance is off. Manny? That's the latest. You know, Brooke Shields has Manny. lots and lots of fans. And her New York fans are having a charity. How can you watch that woman? Do you mind? I'm interested. Why don't you use your magic for something more useful, like helping me find my jacket? You probably left it at Tina and Jerry's last night. Boy, did you get blotto. I was not blotto. I never get blotto. I was attacked. Oh, who ever heard of Portuguese vodka? Was I that bad? You were fine when she stopped bullfighting with the schnauzer. I did that? Stop it. What do you have against Jewel Porter anyway? She's got a big mouth. What else did I do? Thought I had that down pat. When a person makes an ass of himself, he has a right to know. You were very entertaining. Now, would you please put the plug back in? Wait, wait, wait. wait. What do you mean entertaining? Well, you were adorable. And afterwards, you were very sexy. Oh, that part is beginning to come back to me. This isn't garbage day, is it? Dickens is telling us about the garbage, Mother. Really? That's the third time this week. What are we going to do? Helen, do you ever feel left out when she talks to the cat like that? Oh, oh, no. No, really. I, I mean, she's a witch, after all. They're related, you know. Dickens says there's a hostile alien force threatening us. A hostile alien force? Yeah, from somewhere out there. We alert the Pentagon? They know! <laughs> Hello? May I ask who's calling, please? Who? 
Just a moment, please. It's for you. Who is it? Who's your favorite person in the whole wide world? I'm kidding. Miguel, you old scuzzball! You a Porter? What is this? I think it's a call from Jewel Porter. What? Hello, Miss Porter. I, I'm sorry, uh, there was a uh, disturbance here. No, wait, wait, wait. What can I do for you? Yeah. You're a big mouth. You've spread enough poison. Quit now or I'll spread some of my own. Not a big fan, huh? You mean this kind of mail isn't unusual? There is an army of fans out there, Mrs. Tucker. And when I attack one of their favorite stars, I hear from them. You wouldn't believe the mail I get. Women convinced they're going to have Burt Reynolds' baby. Easy, Andre. Lonely men in prison. Hopeful starlets from Hoboken. And every once in a while, I get a letter like that. Well, this guy didn't just send a letter. He sent a snake. Mrs. Porter, if you feel this is a deliberate attempt on your life, you should... No police. Mrs. Tucker. Once they get involved, the media will pick it up and have a field day. It'll be fair game for every nut in Hollywood. Oh, Dawn, dear, get that, please. Here, Mother. Thank you. Hello? Warren. <laughs> I thought you were supposed to be in Rome. When did you get back? I want to have another look at that bathroom. Uh, the snake is gone, right? Oh, yeah, the shelter man came and took it. Good. Now, now, Warren. That's a pretty necklace. Thank you. Is it turquoise? Navajo. You aren't doing it. Uh, Mother says you have psychic powers. Oh. <laughs> well, sometimes I, I sense things. Sometimes I don't. <laughs> it's unusual. A friend bought it for me when we were in Las Vegas last month. Only my mom's not supposed to know I was there. You won't say anything. Lips are sealed. Thanks. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. I see. Uh, can I quote you on that, dear? Oh. Bye bye, sweetie. Well, whoever planted the snake must have ducked out through the bathroom window. Mr. Tucker, well, I may step on toes from time to time, but that's all part of the game. Sure. Star may hold a grudge, but murder. No way. Very disturbed person wrote that note. Find him. And you've got the person who tried to kill me. Will you take the case? Well, Mrs. Porter, we'd like to talk about it first. Uh, can we get back to you? I have a taping session with Paul Newman at four. Why don't you come by the studio then? Paul Newman. I never met Paul Newman. Right. What do you need Paul Newman for when you got the kid, huh? Right, Marsha? Right, kid. Tina just called. All she could find was one sock. She thinks Jerry took your jacket with him. One sock? She thinks he left the other one on the roof. Uh, the roof? The yodeling contest. Rick, we've got to make a decision. I mean, someone's trying to kill Jewel Porter. Honey, this could be a real tough case. I mean, there must be hundreds of crazies out there wanting to see that woman dead. Thousands. No, no, no. This was not sent by a crazy. There are no emotional vibes. Oh, okay. Well, then a very sane person put a snake in her bathtub. No, what I mean is, if a disturbed person sent this, it would be highly charged. But I am picking up something about Miami. Miami? Where'd Miami come from? Only I don't know if it's from this. Can I see that? Yeah. Tell you what I get. I get the letter M out of alignment. I, it's a manual typewriter, not an electric. Some letters lighter, some letters darker, which tells me the person was using a hunt and peck method. That's what I get. OK. Maybe Marsha can come up with something we can go on. Like the typewriter model. Where are you going? To meet Paul Newman. Oh, Rick, please. Okay. Lucky for you, it's a slow month. <laughs>
Are we really on the roof? Only some of us. Dear Big Mouth, this is your second chance. Quit now or it's lights out. He's waiting for me when I got to the studio this morning. Somebody slipped it under my office door. Frankly, I've never been so scared in my life. Jewel? Oh, Darren, I would like you to meet Rick and Amanda Tucker. How do you do? Darren is my personal assistant. Do do? He knows more about this business than anyone in town. <laughs> Present company accepted. Jewel, I've got bad news. I just got a call. Newman can't make it. Can't make it? LAX is fogged in. He's stuck in a holding pattern. That makes two of us. Now what do we do? We've got a show to take. Relax. Jane Fond is on the lot. Now maybe I can persuade her to pinch hit. Oh, Darren, you are a genius. <laughs> I'd be lost without him. Look, I have got to take the opening. Can you two wait around a bit? I'll be right back. Jane Fonda. Remember her in Clute? No. Grandma used to have a spell for getting rid of fog. In five seconds, four, three, two, one. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jewel Porter speaking to you from the heart of Hollywood. Tonight we have a real treat. We're going to meet three celebrities who are superstars in the entertainment industry. Stars so bright, they light up the sky of Hollywood. Stars so bright, they light up the lives of all the people they meet. Tonight we're going to examine their lives, their loves, their triumph over personal tragedy. Tonight we're going to meet three extraordinary people who think of themselves as people first and celebrities. Amanda, what are you doing? Talking to me? Yeah, hold it right there. You must be on the wrong set, buddy. This is a musical. catch him, then we've got nothing to go on. We still have the threat notes, Mr. Porter. Threat notes? What threat notes? Jewel didn't tell you? No, I knew nothing about this until a few minutes ago. I just got in from Miami. Miami? Yeah, I'm in real estate. There's a convention there. Look, I've got to see Jewel. The doctor's given her a sedative. I'm glad you're on the case. He's our man. Honey, before we put the cuffs on him, what do you say we uh, fill in a few details? You know, like clues and motives, uh, detective stuff. Right? Okay, okay, Private Eye. That's what you want? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Anytime. Uh, ride carefully now.
You're not milking this, are you? I love it when you drive. It's got to be the husband. He knows her schedule and he has access to both the studio and her home. Rick? You want me to make his sandwich? Uh-uh. Think I want to be up all night? Nope. It's somebody in the business. Miami. Okay. Why would he send a threatening note to his wife? To throw suspicion off himself. Okay, what about the gorilla? Is that Terry Porter, too? If I were Terry Porter, I'd hire a real gorilla. From Detroit, maybe. Okay, we gotta talk to him again anyway. <laughs> That's a good plan. How do you do, Mr. Porter? Did you hire a hitman to bump off a little woman? No, no, no. We asked him about his wife's professional enemies. That's where we find our man. And while he's busy giving you a nice fat list of red herrings to throw you off the track, I'll check out his typewriter. Oh, and Marcia told me it's an old model, Queen Portable. They don't make them anymore. Mm. Hey, Rick, I offered. Yours tastes so much better. Hmm. Rick, there's someone in the house. It's probably your mother. We don't think so. Oh, yeah. Your hostile alien force. is with us. You're working mighty late, Mr. Chow. Say. Who are you? What are you doing here? Well, electric. She sure is. Hi. May I help you? I'm Rick Tucker. Is Mr. Porter in? I'm Christy. Mr. Porter's out. Oh, darn. Hi, I'm Chop Liver. Oh, I'm sorry. This is my associate, Mavis. Uh, well, when's old Terry getting back? I'm not sure. Perhaps I can help. I'll bet you can. <laughs> <laughs> great tan. Huh? Oh, great. Great. Hawaii, right? Uh-uh. Aspen. I just got back from my vacation. Oh, that's neat. <laughs> well, I think I, I uh, have to be excused, <laughs> ladies. Aspen, huh? Uh, Great place. Have you been there? No, but people talk about it. Alice, you ever been there?
Oh, I'll bet they never even let you out of the lodge, do they? Oh. <laughs> all those zippers all over your ski outfit. You're back! Yeah! Oh. Honey, don't forget your appointment with the periodontist. You're right. Well, it's nice talking to you, Aspen. Nice talking to you. Bye, Mavis. Huh? Oh, <laughs> bye. He wasn't lying about that. Porter was in Miami, all right. According to the letter Amanda photographed, Porter's business is overdue on a quarter million dollar note, and the bank is screaming for their money. So you think because Jewel Porter is loaded that Terry wants to kill her for her money? Well, that is a motive, right? I mean, detective stuff. Speaking of detective stuff, I tracked down your jacket. Jerry took it with him to the tennis club. Well, why there? You had a game with him. Half an hour ago. Oh, no. When did I make a date with Jerry to play tennis? That night. You know, Rick, I've got a hunch the Porter's making it with his secretary. Did you get anything out of her aside from her statistic? Yes, I did. Where would we go to get a list of Jewel Porter's professional enemies? The Academy Awards. I'll tell you where. Her arch rival, the Tribune's gossip columnist, Nathan Bly. Lucky that snake didn't bite her. Lucky for the snake, I mean. <laughs> you know, I could go on all afternoon telling you names of people who bear a grudge towards poor Jewel. This is the guy who knows where the bodies are buried. Right, Mr. Blunt? Yes, but for once, I agree with her. It's not anybody in the film industry. No, these people have far too much to lose. No, I should look somewhere closer to home. How close? Her husband? There are rumors that there's trouble in paradise. Yes, yes. No, but I was thinking of somebody more like her uh, brilliant, ever resourceful assistant. Darren Childs. Darren Childs? Well, what would he have to gain? I happen to know that Darren Childs would love to step into Jewel Porter's shoes. Size nine. He's already laid the groundwork. When her ratings took a dive recently, Darren tried talking a deal to take over her show. Mm -hmm. But of course, the minute her ratings improved, nobody wanted to hear from Darren Child. <laughs> no, I, I thought he would have realized by now that he's never going to replace Jewel Porter. Not as long as she's still around. That is a motive. Darren Childs is the guy we check out No, next. it sounds like sour grapes to me. Wow. Terry Porter's the one who has two good motives. Money and your Miss Aspen there. Okay, so we'll check them both out. But right now, I want to find my jacket. Rick, what is with this jacket, huh? I mean, I'll buy you a new one. Honey, that's my lucky jacket. I wore it the night I asked you to marry me. Oh, really? Yeah. Which night was that? Uh, it was the night you said yes. Oh, that's really sweet. Yeah. You're right, we gotta find that jacket. Andy! Did Jerry drop off Rick's jacket? It's real important that we find it. No, I think he took it with him. Oh, Rick, keep doing that. Can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah, sure. Hey, how you doing? Rick. <laughs> Key to Portuguese vodka is before you drink it, you wanna take about this much olive oil, three tablespoons of cream cheese, then you're safe. Gotta get back to work. Mr. Charles is an in. I clear everything for him. And before I can schedule an appointment, you'll have to state your business or leave. Thank you very much. But, uh, We'll catch him tomorrow. How do we get by Miss Berlin Wall there, huh? This is not going to be nice, but...
to a port of production no i already gave him your other two messages he obviously doesn't want to talk to you and neither do i oh my god dates with Jules producers last month. Guess who's here? Amanda, are you coming? I don't know. Something about that car. Maybe it needs a tune up. Good evening. Mrs. Porter's expected. Nathan Bly, that envious, evil-minded, gossip-mongering hack? You would take his word over mine? You are not answering my question. Were you making a deal behind my back? I don't have to stand here and listen to this. Mrs. Porter, there's more. They were all typed on his machine. Darren, I don't believe it. What was that? Mother! Oh my God, Darren! That was supposed to be you. Hey, Rick. Is that it? Excuse me, Nick. The night janitor. 
Been missing two days. Looks like he was killed somewhere else and moved here. We found his cart in the corridor near Child's office. Well, we know it wasn't Child's. Right. But it was somebody who knows this studio real well. How do you figure? The killer used plastic explosive to blow up that car the other night. C3? Yeah. We traced it to the special effects department here. He stole enough to demolish ten cars, but the thing is, this guy only used enough for one. He really knows his stuff. He knows to save enough for nine more tries. Y yeah. It won't hurt him, will it? No, nah, not at all, lady. You put your bait in on this end, and your raccoon comes in through here, steps on this, What do you use for bait? You got any marshmallows? Marshmallow? Oh, yeah. Raccoon's got a real sweet tooth. Sardines or a piece of bacon will do OK, though. Marshmallow? What a beautiful collection. Oh, thanks. Read my future. <laughs> no, I want to know I'm going to live happily ever after. I don't really read cards. I, I read people. Sort of. Well, read me. Well, that necklace. Uh, it's not just a gift. It's very special. It is special. Uh, it was given to you by a man. Go on. See a big room with lots of people that you've never met. And lots of flowers. You're very happy, but you're also very sad. That's incredible. I got married in Vegas in one of those chapels. Please don't tell my mother. But I need to know. Did I do the right thing? Oh, I don't know, Dawn. Well, nobody can answer that. I, um... I couldn't find any marshmallows, so uh, I had to use sardines. Oh, I made a lovely cake. Would you like some? Oh, no, thank you. I I've got to be getting back. My mother's expecting me. The trap. Oh, oh. poor Dickens. Oh, poor baby cake. Oh. I guess it'll have to be marshmallows. Get the notes, too. Rick? Hmm? I think the Dawn connection is really important. Yeah? She's very uptight about her marriage. Maybe it's tied in somehow with the attempts on Jules' life. So all of a sudden you're giving up on Porter and now you go back to your intuition? No. No, but I, I think we should check the records at Vegas and find out who Dawn married. Hi. How's it going? Thanks, Mom. Oh, uh, I almost forgot. Uh, uh, J uh, Jerry brought your jacket by. Oh. He thought you might want your uh, number from the relay race. The relay race? The relay race. <laughs> Is that it? What? The relay race? Does that finish it? That's it. I told you you were adorable. Hey, look at this. What? Remember that newspaper you borrowed from Porter's office? This is a blow-up of him at the convention. Guess who else is there? That's his secretary. How could I forget? Mm -hmm. Miss Aspen. <laughs>
Business with Jewel, I wish it were over and done with. Now it's beginning to get to me. Honey, just relax, honey. Hmm? I've never seen you so tense. But I know how to take care of that. I love you, Christian. I love you too, Terry. Oh. Okay, buddy. Come on out. Is it true, Don, you married Andre? That's amazing. You really do have psychic powers, huh? No. Just the ability to deduce and a real resourceful secretary who checked out the records in Vegas. He really loves me. And my mother's so busy. Andre is the first person who ever made me feel important. Have you tried telling your mother? I don't want to add to her worries. And she wouldn't accept Andre. Oh, I think you underestimate her. You know, if you really love this guy... I do! He just needs somebody to believe in him. He's had such a hard time since he came to this country. Yeah, well, I still think you should tell her. I mean, underneath all that drive and ambition, there's a person who really needs and cares as much as you do. What makes you say that? Call it intuition. Well, I gotta get going. What a lovely cat. <laughs> Reminds me of Dickens. He does. I call him Humphrey. <laughs> Here. I want you to have him. Oh, I couldn't. Please. That'd make me very happy. Thanks. I'll take real good care of him. <laughs> uh, you're way <laughs> off the track, Mr. Tucker. My wife knows all about Christy and me. Are you saying Jewel gave you her blessing? Blessing's a little strong. Let's call it an understanding. You see, Jewel's married to her career. And Jewel's happy. And I'm happy. And I'm very happy. And why all the double talk about Aspen in Miami? Well, it was for Jewel's sake. She didn't want to wind up in Nathan Bly's gossip column herself. So you see, you're wasting your time. Maybe. You still stand to inherit a fortune if Jewel dies. Look, Jewel has totally written me out of her will. Everything goes to dawn now. It's part of the price of freedom. Hmm. Hey, what about here? Huh? Oh, no, I think Dickens likes it better on the bureau. <sighs> no, he doesn't. Dickens doesn't even want it in the house. We can't figure this guy Andre until we get something solid on him. All we know for sure now is that he married her. And he gambles. Hmm. Well, I've got Marcia checking with the immigration authorities, so... Will you look at that? He's jealous. So am I. Rick, it's the middle of the day. <laughs> Rick. Okay. So, we blow lunch. <laughs> Hi. Oh. I need to tell Mother about us. Not now. She has too much on her mind. Soon then, okay? I don't want to go on hiding like this. Uh, maybe in a few days. Where's Humphrey? 
I gave him to Amanda. Amanda? Yeah, the lady detective my mother hired. Oh. Andre came to L.A. in 1980, joined the stuntman union in 81, does occasional stunt work. With wild animals, maybe, snakes. Mm. He worked on a movie called Jungle Terror. Mm -hmm. Stunt work? Well, that could explain how he's so familiar with the studio. Car repossessed twice, once in 81, then again last spring. Several credit cards canceled due to delinquent payments. Guy should stay away from Vegas. Do we have anything on him before he left Belgium? Uh... He needs something, something solid. It's nothing spectacular. He went to college in Brussels, served two years in the National Service where he trained as a demolitions expert. Hold it, it hold it, hold it, hold it. That's solid. No, he's not like that. He's gentle and kind and loving, and he'd never do anything to hurt anybody, never. Dawn. Is there anything I can do to help? No, thank you, Amanda. I think I must handle this myself. I've dodged my personal responsibilities too long. If we can find something to link Andre with the rest of that plastic explosive, we can nail him. Do you think he'd still be hanging on to it? If he is, I hope he's got it in a nice, cool place. You know, Jewel Porter turned out to be all right. Yeah. She gave up her family, though, for a career. She was gone, bought a lot of ground to make up. I think they're going to do just fine. Mm. There. Oh, do you feel chilly? Mm -hmm, a little. Mm. Mm. Andre. What are you doing here? I need something. The cut. Where's the cut? Dickens? Who's Dickens? Our cat. I want Humphrey. Who's Humphrey? The ceramic cut. Dawn gave you. Where is it? The ceramic cat. Dickens didn't want it in the house. Just give me the cut and I'll leave. Oh, no, he won't. C3's in the cat. That's where you hid the rest of the plastic explosives, right, Andre? Be sensible. I have no reason to hurt you if you tell me where it is. The dead janitor and Darren Charles blown up in a car is two reasons, huh? He plans to blow us all up tonight, huh? Right, Andre? He wouldn't do that, would he? Oh, he would, Ellen, and he will. He's not here to eat your oatmeal cookies. Enough of this. Tell me where it is now, or I start with her. Get out of the house! Rick! Get out of the house! Terrific. Where 
do you take him? We fly him up into the hills by helicopter, then we let him go. Well, uh, what about his family? Uh, maybe he has a wife and children. What's a little garbage, huh? Uh, we changed our minds. You can let him go. I can't do that, man. It's against the rules. Look, give us a call if you get any more trouble, okay? Bye. Bye.